the average distance of the electron from the nucleus depends on n squared and it, de it depends on n, okay, quantum number n, it also depends on the quantum number L. And we know what A naught is, right? What's A naught? The Bohr radius, 52.9 picometers, and Z is the number of protons in the nucleus. It's a nuclear charge. You can see, okay, comparing two orbitals, let's say hydrogen versus helium plus, which one will have a higher Z? Helium would have a higher Z. What happens if Z is higher? Bigger denominator average distance is going to be smaller. Why would an electron in a 1s orbital of helium plus be closer to the nucleus as compared to an electron in a 1s orbital of hydrogen? You've got two protons in your nucleus that's pulling in that electron. It's going to feel a much stronger pull towards the nucleus. So you would expect the average distance of the electron would be smaller if it's in the helium plus ion as opposed to when it's in the hydrogen atom. Okay. So let's apply that form let's apply that formula or let's see if we can reason this out. For which of these orbitals is the distance among these orbitals, for which orbital is the distance of the electron on average farthest from the nucleus? In other words, which one has the largest R? Average R. Okay, let's compare 2P hydrogen versus 2P He plus. 2P hydrogen versus 2P He plus. Which one is farther away on average? This is going to be farther, right? Why? This has two protons pulling in those two electrons, the, the electron, right? So where this, whereas the hydrogen has only have, you only have one proton pulling in the electron. So it can't be this. Well, now let's compare 1s of hydrogen versus 2p of hydrogen. Based on what you've learned from freshman chemistry. 1s versus 2p. From which orbital, in which orbital is the electron farther away from the nucleus? Farther away from the nucleus? Yeah. That's what. It has more energy. That means, into instinctively, you say it's got more energy. It's capable of moving further away from the nucleus. Okay. Well, we can actually calculate those. Let's calculate it for the two p of uh, hydrogen. Uh, let's do it for one s. Okay. So for one s, n equals one, one, and l is. Zero. So let's plug it in. So average distance for the 1s. N is 1. That's 1 plus 1 half times 1 minus 0 times 0 plus 1 over 1 squared. A naught over Z. So what does that give you? Okay, so that's 1. 1 plus 1 half, 1 minus 0, A naught over Z. I'm doing it right. Huh? And then you have 1, 1 plus 1 half, A naught over Z. Correct? And so that's going to be 1 times 1.5, A naught over Z. And Z is 1 for a hydrogen atom. So 1.5 A naught. That's your average distance. Okay, remember your radial distribution function for the 1s? Maximum at A naught, right? Where's your average distance? Right here. This is your average R. A naught is your most probable R. Okay, average distance is obtained differently from most probable distance. If it was uniform throughout, uh, never mind, forget it. <laughs> okay, so you get a different uh, formula there. So it's 1.5 A naught. Okay. 
So if you did that, okay, for the 1s, like I said, it's 1.5a0. 2s and 2p, so let's let's sketch that. So here's your nucleus right here. 1.5a0, so let's make this 1a, uh, let's see. Let's make this, um, let's change that. Okay, so let's put your nucleus over here. So that's 1.5 A naught right here, right? So this right here is the most probable distance of the electron from the nucleus in the 1s orbital. I'm sorry, the average distance. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the average distance. What would be the average distance for the 2s? If you plug in the numbers, the quantum numbers for 2s, it's going to come out to be 6a naught. So that's 1.5 right there. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right here. So the average distance of an electron in the one in the 2s orbital would be 6a naught. What's the average distance for the 2p? Surprise, surprise, you would Based on what you've learned in freshman chemistry, you might have assumed it's going to be farther than 6A0, right? It's actually 5A0. So here's the average distance for 2P. So you can see the higher the N, on average, the farther the electron is from the nucleus. What about 3S, 3P, and 3D? Where would those be? Let me just put this in black then. So here's 1s, and there's 2p, and there's 2s. What's the average distance from the 3s? 13.5 a0. Where's 13.5 a0? So there's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the average distance. of an electron in a 3s orbital would be that far, 13 times farther away compared to the, uh, twice as far compared to the 2s, right? What about uh, 3p? It's 12.5, so it's around here, and 10.5 is around here, okay? You can see why this is called the shell model of the atom. 1s, the first shell, this is your second shell. A larger n would give you the third shell. Okay? So we say 2s and 2p belong to the same shell because the general vicinity of the average distance would be right around in the same uh, spherical shell around the nucleus. Okay? So you're most likely, if you're find an electron somewhere around here, chances are you're dealing with an electron in a, either a 2s or a 2p orbital. If your electron is way over here, chances are you're dealing with an electron in the 3s, 3p, or 3d orbital. Okay? If your electron is somewhere around here, then most that's most probably an electron in a 1s orbital because that's where around the average distance is for an electron in the 1s orbital. Okay, that will have that. Okay, that filling of orbitals that assumes you have more than one electron. We're talking about one electron systems right now, so we'll get to. Uh, it gets a little more complicated when you have more than one electron because now. You've got other electrons shielding each electron from the nucleus. So you have to take into account uh, electron screen, what's called like shielding of the, of the nuclear charge by the other electrons. So the formulas we have here are not going to work for atoms that have more than one electron. So right now we're just focusing on the one electron system. But like I said, typically this is what we do in GCHEM. We look at something simple and then we try to compare some, uh, we try to analyze in something more complicated by comparing it against a simple system 
okay? And so right now we're just looking at the simplest possible atom where you have one electron. So the average distance, okay, in general the electron is farther on average from the nucleus if you have a larger n, okay? So 1s would be closer, an electron if it happens to be in the 1s orbital would be closer to the nucleus as opposed to if it's in the 2s or the 2p. And within the same, if you're comparing the same orbital in different ions, different systems, like let's say hydrogen versus He+, a higher Z simply means you have more protons in the nucleus pulling in the same electron <coughs> in the same orbital. So 1s of helium plus, the average distance for that would be smaller than the average distance for a 1s electron in the hydrogen atom. And what did we see earlier? Within the same shell, okay, the larger the L, the closer it is to the nucleus. Okay. So I go back here, you'll notice, okay, 2p is actually on average closer to the nucleus than an electron in the 2s. The 3d is closer to the electron, is in the 3d orbital, an electron will be closer to the nucleus compared to a 3p or a 3s. Identify the radial function for 1s, 2s, and 2p as shown in this diagram. So you have a diagram here that shows the radial distribution function for 1s, 2s, and 2p. Which one do you think is the 1s? The green one, closest to the nucleus. Right? 2s versus 2p. Which one do you think on average, which curve do you think represents on average an electron that's closer to the nucleus? The blue curve or the red curve? The blue one's closer, right? So this, is, well, this would be 2s or 2p? The 2p would be closer to the nucleus. And so the red curve right here, that would be your the radial distribution function for 2s. And in fact, if you did plot those, those that's what you'd get. So what's the the Basic, what this is telling you is that there's a node right here. So the probability goes up, not, not too much, and then it goes back down, you get, you get to a node. So you get what's called a radial node. And then the probability starts to go up again for the 2s orbitals. Again, you're seeing the same pattern we've seen in earlier systems. As you go to higher and higher energies, Okay, as your quantum number increases, you get more and more nodes. Okay, so 1s orbital has no radial node. The 2s orbital has one radial node. The 3s orbital is going to have two radial nodes and so on. We'll, we'll look, um, look at that more in depth later. 